Fine here, Art Fine's poker party. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Art Fine's platter party coming to you from Hollywood with a very special guest, Skip Heller. How you doing, Skip? I, I feel very special. You're very special because you're the one that could come today. Yeah. <laughs> well, all the people I call, nobody could make it. I got a 145 taping. Anybody who can get that call at 140 and be there is special. It's special. You're a special guy. And I've always wanted to do a show more or less dedicated to this music uh, that I play the three minutes of during an average show. So lots of songs to play for us, to play for the ladies and gentlemen out there. And rather than talk about anything else, I'm gonna start off with a song right now. Now, this of course is preceded by a question. Uh, who's the coolest person you talk to lately? Well, myself, not included, of course. Coolest person I talk to lately? Yeah. Uh, you're always interviewing people, you're dealing with- Oh, the, the most cool, the coolest person I've interviewed lately, or the coolest oh, yeah, person I've to, just talked to well, in a general okay, way? Both. Uh, if, there's two, if there's two different ones. Okay, coolest person who I had a conversation with recently, not on the payroll to do so, was Matt Groening. Mm -hmm. uh, and coolest person who they paid me to chat with would be Joe Batan. Uh, Joe Batan of? He is sort of one of the godfathers of Latin soul music. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's on the new Art LeBeau Dedicated to You compilation, so you know he's cool. Well, who's the other Latino guy you talked to a couple of months ago? Who you oh, played? Lalo Guerrero. You played with him. Yeah, I played with Lalo. Yeah, well, you get around. And so do I. Now, this is the guy I talked to this morning. Let's listen to a brand new record. I wanted to say this to impress you. Brand new album by Dale Hawkins, who hasn't had much out in the past oh, 30 years, but he's the guy that did Suzy Q. It's almost impossible that a record like this could come out, especially by an older guy. I mean, this is so flipped. This is the opening cut on the brand new Dale Hawkins album. Let's take a listen to it right whenever you're ready. That's it. Kick, kick it off. I don't know. I don't know about you. I, I haven't heard a old rockabilly guy sound that great, maybe ever. I mean, in other words, Billy Riley makes records. They're fine. Ronnie uh, Dawson. Ronnie Dawson. If you go good. see Ronnie live, it's no records. Good. Records. I said I haven't heard that, any record that good. Uh, I don't really put on rockabilly records too much. But I mean, rockabilly records by old guys. That's that's really kind of prohibitive because uh, Carl Perkins didn't make any good records in the last 20 or 30 years, and you know, the the genre. Jerry Lee made that one that was sort of good. 
and nothing. No, even he, even he hasn't. This thing just completely rocks. Mm -hmm. And he's got this old voice, which actually the guys on Sun all sounded like they were 60 years old, anyways, even though they were 22. <laughs> so it fits, it fits right in. Um, so that's Dale Hawkins. I talked to him this morning because I got his number from somebody, and I want to get him on the show sometime. And he's the guy that did Suzy Q and numerous other great things. What did he produce? Oh, I I'm leaving it all up to you. I think Dale and Grace, and. Was it Western Union by the Five Americans? I think so too. Got me on that one. Okay. I don't even know I that stumped, record. I stumped you. That's great. I feel, I feel great. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah, Art. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, what did you bring with today, Skip? Uh, I think the first thing I brought was Can I Come Over Tonight by the Velours. What is I've never heard of this record. It's, uh, it's a doo-wop record from New York. Uh -huh. and it's Which, by the way, is not redundant. We might add that a lot of people think New York is the home of doo-wop records when no, it's most at least of equally L.A. It's, and it's at least equally Detroit, and it's at least equally Chicago. Uh -huh. You know, like the Midwestern doo-wop groups were just as good as anything coming off of either coast. Now, I'm, I'm, com I'm not completely ignorant, but I'm fairly ignorant in the field. I know Earth Angel coming from L.A., and I know a lot of really great seminal records like The Platters were from L.A. and yeah. a few other things. So I know that at the very beginning, rock and roll was starting here, at least simultaneous with everybody else, but maybe before because Big J. McNeely was blowing his brains out on sex in 1950 and 51. Yeah, but Bill Haley was in Philadelphia doing Rock the Joint in year? 1951. 51? Yeah. When did Freed go on the air in Cleveland? Do we know? 53, 52, yeah, 53. 53, so a lot of stuff was going on before. But yeah. back to doo-wop for a second, which is not my favorite feel. We could even talk about the, the doo-wop TV special. Um, my, not my favorite feel, but I like it. Mm. Uh, I just think, I do think of it in New York terms. This is the velours. That's a new. They were a New York group. But what I was going to say is, everybody points up to the Orioles. It's too soon to know as being the first real codified doo-wop record. I was out of Baltimore. Oh really? Yeah. Well, what a Baltimore Orioles. Orioles, Orioles. Yeah. Uh, when is this one from? Uh, I think it's from like '56 or '57. And you, you've heard a lot of records. This, this really, obviously, for you to choose to bring it with, means a lot to you. It's. Uh, I like it because it's one of the few doo-wop records I've ever heard with a polyrhythmic vocal bass line. Well, let's go listen to poly, poly, is poly one of those? Yeah, in other words, what the bass singer is singing is not locked into the normal beats. Okay, let's take a listen to... Can I Come Over Tonight by the Velours. What kind of CD is this on? Onyx Records. Can I come... Am I a 
that, was that the actual end of the record? No, yeah, that was the actual whole record. That's it's shorter a, than Dance, Dance, Dance by the Beach Boys. Yeah, yeah. So you can draw this line of development between doo-wop groups and the Minutemen, I guess. <laughs> what, uh, no, that guy was going doo-doo-doo-doo-doo. Yeah, was, that's, that's what I'm saying. Are you sure he was in the right session? You're like, maybe he just... Oh, yeah, because he's singing, he's in key, you mm -hmm. know, insofar as people are on doo-wop records. That's often the charm of them, but I love that record. I mean, nobody, nobody told him, don't do that. You know, if I'd known you were going to bring up the subject of polyrhythms, I would have brought in Angel Baby by Rosie and the Originals, and we could have played the flip side, which is a very famous record. Oh, um... Give me Love? Yeah. Rosie doesn't sing on it, but it's the most arrhythmic record I've ever heard. Uh, you ever heard the Shags? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right, we're, we're, we're rolling them out here. Um, I've got to have them switch over to tape because I don't have a CD. I can't believe I'm playing any CDs because I got CDs, but... My best records are records, of course. Yeah, so are mine, but I wind up buying them on CDs. Uh, I want to play another Tammy Wynette song. Last time I played one uh, on a show, I got a, lot of, a great lot of response from the guy in the control room. Not this place, but <laughs> Juan over at uh, What is that? He never heard Tammy. And Tammy's the greatest. I don't know. Did you listen to country music in the 70s? Yeah, that's when I first really started listening to the radio because there was a really good country station in... in uh, in Philadelphia. Because there's certain theories of rock and, and music history that, like one that maintains that rock and roll died in 59, which I'm inclined to believe, and it also died again in 67 in a way when it was co-opted by a lot of pop music. Anyways, there's various times the death of rock and roll has been reported. I can't report the actual life and death of country music because it goes on, but my own, in my own interaction with it started in the early 70s because something strange was going on. Some oddness was going Yeah, well, on. a lot of people always say, oh, the Sex Pistols, what an event that defined the 70s. Yeah. And for me, you know, the Outlaws and Redheaded Stranger coming right on top of each other was a much bigger event. <laughs> Is that right? Totally. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, country records weren't John Denver anymore. There was something going on. There's just something in the air from like 72 to 75. Well, and I'd even push it up to 77. Yeah? Yeah, because... Well, when was the Urban Cowboy? That's 78 or that's, was that, that I, I don't think that actually killed country music, but it... It made yeah, it smell it, funny. It, it, <laughs> it coincided with the death of anything interesting going on. Well, I think also just things were generally less interesting by that point anyway. Okay, whatever you say. Uh, let's listen to Tammy Wynette, who was just a straight, straight best-selling singer of the era, and the combination of Tammy with the producer Billy Sherrill for the whole 70s was magic, and there's two periods, the Stand By Your Man period, which is kind of steel guitar-y and plain and good, and now this other period, which is highly orchestrated and highly stringed and great. Uh, this is Till I Can Make It My Own. It's a real tearjerker. It's the best. It's the greatest. Tammy Wynette, 1977 or 8. I'll need time to get you up my mind, and I may sometimes bother you, try to be in touch with you, even as too much of you from time to time. Without a love 
great. Tammy Wynette's was great. And volume four, the greatest hits, I think, is the best one. It's got that on it and a few others. It doesn't have Stand By Your Man, which I don't listen to at all. Actually, for that period, I like Apartment Number 9 the best. And, I like and Good Girl is going to go bad. Good Girl is going to go bad. That's a good one. And D-I-V-O. Okay, D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Uh, how many other songs can you name that are spe something spelled out? R-O-C-K by Bill Haley. Okay, what else? Um, <laughs> let's see. There's a second Elvis song Dig called... Dig by uh, Nervous Nervous. Is that D-I-G? D-I-G, yeah. Uh, there's a second Elvis song called Trouble. That's yeah, T-R-O-U-B-L-E. Yeah, T-R-O-U-B-L-E. And... Uh, you, you already came up with more than I expected. All right, we've exhausted the field. Uh, that was Tammy Wynette, a uh, record we just I threw together to come down here. Uh, you have something coming up from Leonard Bernstein. Stein. Was, same to you. Uh, Leonard Bernstein, what, what is it? Uh, well, Mr. Fien. Yeah, um, yeah. It's uh, the fourth movement from his second symphony, The Age of Anxiety. 